Khan! Public access. The final frontier. These are the adventures of the cinephiles, whose five-year mission is to explore strange and unusual movies. To boldly watch and review what no one has watched before. while since we've been in the studio but we are here back we got new shows we got a lot of stuff to discuss um but before i do let me introduce our wonderful co-host to my left mr eric cohen to his left jeff gallishaw and to his left michael faults all right well let's let's, let's talk about let's give everybody an update we've taken a little sabbatical as you can see i've grown a mustache so it's been a while since <laughs> since we've been uh been taping but and i shaved my mustache we uh we, uh, we've taped a lot of new shows, which we hope to have uploaded to YouTube. We actually did a lot of location shoots. We did one at Arab's apartment. Uh, we did one at a wonderful bar in uh, Bushwick called Gotham City Lounge, which you'll see soon. And we also did one down in Lower, the, Lower East Side called Nurse Betty's, another great bar. And uh, we decided to the theme shows around the actual surroundings. So be on the lookout for those and uh, check out some more mini reviews, which we'll be posting on YouTube. As Gloria, which would be very kind enough to display those on the, on the lower third there. Um, please check out the YouTube website and uh, subscribe if you haven't and whatnot. I want to get our fans a little bit more excited because we have uh, a two-parter coming up that talks about Star Wars. We discuss all, all the on Star Wars show. films. On this show? Uh, yes. Well, not on this taping. That, that would be Star Trek. Uh, oh, yes. Excuse <laughs> me. Excuse <laughs> me. And, uh, Star Trek. <laughs> And, uh, and then we also uh, have a two-parter uh, where we're dealing with alcoholics uh, on one episode and junkies on the other. So there you go. Yeah, substance so abuse, man. It's, it's going to be a good show. And also, like I said, check out the YouTube site. Please subscribe if you haven't. And we promise you, we ha we've been a little lax with updates, but we have been working very hard behind the scenes to and bring And check some out our Facebook fan page. Yeah, that's where we it's at. We don't have it listed underneath the just thing here. Just look for us on Facebook. You'll see us. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll just just look us up on Face. Jo uh, face. Look us up on Face. Look book. us up on Facebook. <laughs> or FB. Join and, and join the discussions. We got discussions going. And we're right? all there individually. So add us as a friend if you like. And uh, we'll we miss our Manhattan back. fans. So we're come back. On. Yeah, we're back. Anyway, let's get into this, guys. Uh, we were talking for a long time. We got a few requests on YouTube to do a show on um, on Star Trek. So this is it. We're going to be doing the first. This is the first of a two-parter on the Star Trek series. Uh, we're discussing uh, today the first uh, the, the, the films in the the, the entire series, which would be the most picture, Wrath of Khan, Search of Spock, Voyage Home, Final Frontier, and maybe if we have time, we'll do some more as well. Um, but let's. I wanted to see if you could actually name all. Oh, of them. I can. Okay, Final <laughs> Frontier, uh, the Undiscovered Country. Uh, let's see, Generations, uh, let's see, The First Contact, uh, the next one would be Insurrection, then the next one after that would be Nemesis, and then the next one, of course, would be Star Trek. There you go. Yay. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so let's start off with uh, Star, Tra Star Trek, the motion picture. I have some very interesting behind the scenes uh, info on this one. Good. I'm a, I, I hate to admit, I am not a Trekkie. I'm a somewhat Trekker. I do like the series, but I am not a person who goes around wearing Vulcan ears. What's the difference between a Trekkie and a I Trekker? I was going to ask. Well, a Trekkie is the stuff that we call like losers. You know, like, hey, you're a Trekkie. They don't like that term, so they call themselves Trekkers. Watch the documentary Trekkies uh, for more info on that, uh, which is actually a very good documentary. Um, but let's get into this today. Star, uh, Star Trek, the motion picture, uh, of course, is based on the original TV series, which uh, was a flop in its time, but became a huge hit in syndication and became the number one rated show uh, with young adults. Uh, at the time, when it was on NBC, it was actually, it was, it was highest, uh, the ratings were the highest, I believe, in the, you know, the lower age group, which was the most the in demand by advertisers. Well, the, pro the, problem was, the problem with Star Trek when it was on, on the TV is it was going against the most highly rated show going at the time, which I forget what it was, but it was the number one rated show in the Nielsen rating, so it, it had a hard time going. You and, know, also the, and also, the, the rating system was different back then. They had an overall rating system where it's how many people were watching total and not the actual age demographic. They were actually number one from 18 to 30-year-olds. Mm -hmm. But back then, that you know, that's, of course, what most advertisers want to grab is that age because it's the most people going And the show was, was uh, produced by Lucille Ball. 
Desilu, Desilu Productions. Okay. Desilu Productions. But anyway, after it went there off the go. air, it went into syndication, became a huge hit, and there was like talk of actually bringing back the series as another, another, another on another network. And, and Paramount was actually talking about creating their own network, the Paramount Network, which didn't get made until the '90s. You know, the UPN. Um, but uh, it, 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 there were some sets built for the show, but the network never took off. And instead of uh, shelving the entire project, they decided to make it into an actual movie because of the success of. Star Wars. Uh, so Star Wars is really the catalyst for bringing back the uh, Star Trek franchise. And you could see, too, in Star Trek The Motion Picture, how they adapted a lot of those special effects from Star Wars into the Star Trek Yeah, universe. in fact, a lot of the, 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 uh, his, the actual production of Star Trek The Motion Picture was absolutely one of the most troubled, I believe, in history. It was really a very troubled shoot. Um, Everything that went wrong could have, you know. Harlan Ellison, who was like the greatest science fiction writer, actually was one of the people p proposing storylines, and he actually I had wouldn't say the greatest, maybe one, one of the greatest. Yeah. Well, let's just say he's a legend in his own mind. Anyway, he came up with a great concept and actually said, "What if, um, you know, the, the Starship Enterprise goes into warp speed and they reach the, the end of the galaxy and meet a wall?" They said, "Not big enough." He said, "Fuck you!" Walked out, and that was it. So they had to go back to square one. So they got some writer, and they actually. A retool the script that was written for the TV series. The okay. Phase two is what the name of the show was. And on paper, it should have been a very good movie because you have one of the greatest directors who ever lived, Robert Wise, who basically has done many different genres. He's done. Who is Robert Wise? Robert Wise, of course. He's the done Haunting. Uh, West Side Story. West Side Story, Sound of Music. And he's also most his most important contribution. But you don't like musicals. I don't like musicals. But his most impo important contribution ever was the editor of Citizen Kane. Also, um, he also dabbled in science fiction before. In fact, he made two of the most underrated science fiction films. Well, they're not underrated, but one of them is The Andromeda Strain yes. and, of course, The Day the Earth Stood Still. Mm -hmm. So this man was perfect on paper for Star Wars. So let's talk, let's talk about the movie. Yes, well, let's yes. get into, well, um, the movie, um, of course, concerns a mysterious probe that actually reaches the Earth and is in search of a certain entity. V'ger. V'ger, looking for the creator. Uh, and it's about to destroy the actual planet um, looking for this person. So the Enterprise is sent in to intercept this thing before it reaches Earth and destroys Earth. Um, the problem with uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture for me, I mean, in spite of wonderful eye candy, in fact, Douglas Trumbull did the special effects who did 2001, mm -hmm. probably the, one, the pioneer special effects man of I was going to say that, that Star Trek The Motion Picture owes more to 2001 than Star Wars. I agree with you, but I mean, it's because of Star Wars right. that, that the movie got yeah, made. Even with the story, too, yeah. Um, but the problem is, with me, is that um, the Russ production schedule, as even Robert Wise said, he, ne he didn't even, the, he said literally the prints were dripping wet at the premiere. There was not a completed sound mix, the film went on for, it went in for a long time. In fact, there's lots of scenes of, you know, the ship moving around and just like, okay, where's the story here? Um, it just goes on and on. I feel it's, it's a great idea, but it's just so padded out and it was just so poorly done um, because of, they were just rushed. In fact, they said, I mean, if you actually watch some of the scenes, you can see, you know, not, the sets are not even finished. Um, well, it's a very slow film to sit through. In fact, really the only thing that is, to me, entertaining about it is actually maybe seeing the Enterprise on the big screen and the special effects. But other than that, I really didn't enjoy it. But again, I'm a mild Star Trek fan, so I'm not, you know, busting at the seams, you know, to watch it because when it came out, I was still a little kid. So I just mainly watched it on cable and just thought it was like, you know, almost like an extension of the series. So it really didn't impress me that much. I really didn't really get into the movies till you know the next film. Yeah, the problem is too is that um, like, is Robert Wise actually went back and actually improved the film quite a bit um, in the director's cut um, and actually fixed a lot of things. But the biggest weakness in the film is that this it, excuse me this script was originally as, as I said written for TV and it was padded out. So there's That's two new characters like. they were trying to add to the TV show in case <laughs> they couldn't get uh, Leonard, uh, Leonard Nimoy to come back, which is of course the cap the Captain Decker. And Aaliyah, who is the ball headed a Persis Kambado, is they are the two of the most boring actors. Who they uh, eliminated at the end of the film. Yeah, essentially. they eliminated at the end of the film, and um, well, they both are somewhat eliminated. Are they like? They, are they fused they merge, together? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, it's it's not a bad film, but the problem is that there's so much money. It just in Robert Wise directing, you really expected a really terrific science fiction film on the uh, level. Of not a, not at the time. Not at the time uh, when it first came out of the theater. I mean, I didn't know Robert Wise from a hole in the head. I mean, I was just a kid. Mm -hmm. But I was a Star Trek fan because of the syndication. And I went and saw it. Yes, it, it is a slow film. 
But the reasons what you stated earlier, when you gain a whole new appreciation when you see it in the theater or you see it in a, a big screen presence. I'm sure you saw it in the theater, yeah. correct? And the special effects are really mind-blowing for its time. I mean, it's unbelievable. Especially, the thing that blew me away was when Spock decides to get into that uh, one-man suit yeah, with the cool. jetpack and go and try and do a Vulcan mind meld with the, the presence known as V'ger, which actually turns out to be the Voyager Pro. But anyway. Spoiler. Okay. Uh, if you guys but, haven't seen it yet. Yeah, like I them. said, you know, but it's also interesting, too, that they introduced the, the, the character of Decker involved because he's the son from uh, the, Doomsday they, uh, the, mm -hmm. the Doomsday Machine, that character of Decker. Yeah, that's the thing, too, is that they never make that clear. It's just, you know, trivia for fans, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, my feeling about the film is, I, when I remember seeing it the first time, I was blown away by the special effects as well. I, you know... But I thought it was incredibly boring, and I remember that. And I, and to this day, I still say, it, it, like everyone seems to sleepwalk through the film. Oh, I agree with you. It's like even yeah. William Shatner's really, really muted, which sometimes could be a good thing. But My in this man. film, it was just kind of. And uh, what I remember was thinking, okay, there's that whole scene where like uh, William Shatner's approaching the USS Enterprise for the first time in like years, uh, I know this and it's now. supposed to be like, oh, look at that, it's my old home, and all that stuff. All I could think about watching it, because it went on for so long, yeah, it's like all I could minutes. think about was like, is William Shatner wearing eyeliner? I couldn't figure it out. It was like somehow, it was like... When you were a kid, you thought this? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, that's is, what stuck in my that's mind. That's a perfect example of what, I, what the problem with the film is, is that scene is where you see the ship. It literally takes about five minutes. They speed it up in the director's cut, but it's just they want to show the special effects to tell a story, and they forget about the story. And the problem is, too, is like I said, they give Ilea and his Captain Decker mm -hmm. So much to do, but they forget. They wouldn't. What they fail to do is they neglect the rest of the cast, like Sulu, mm -hmm. du, you know, uh, Scotty. And, I guess uh, the reason Uhura. why, and I, I'm clueless as to why they did this, but I guess one of the good reasons why they did that slow scene with the the scope of the ship is you forget when you see it on your TV, yeah. you think how small it is. Mm -hmm. It's probably the size of what, like a B-52 bomber or something. Mm -hmm. When in reality, this is the huge, huge structure. So maybe that's why they prolonged it. I mean, uh, I guess on the DVD with them. Tightening it up, maybe yeah, it made it's a, a difference. Much better, it, the direction cut is much better. Unfortunately, when they restored it and they did it, they did it uh, for standard definition, so that's why it's not going to be out in high def. There is no high def master of it, which is sad. However, I will give credit the, two, the, the credit where the film it does deserve it. The uh, 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 let's see, uh, Leonard Nimoy gives a great performance, probably his best performance in the series, I think. And the score by Jerry Goldsmith, wow, that's incredible. In fact, they've used it; they loved it so much they use it for the next generation on the right. Theme. Um, definitely a great score, but the movie very problematic and very. Before slow. before we move on to the next yes, film, sir. funny little bit of trivia. Uh, I read in William Shatner's biography that the costumes that they designed yeah, for the uh, movie were so tight that they had to have the cast lean against wooden benches or boards to zip up the costumes. They were so tight. He said he couldn't. They couldn't sit down either. They had to yeah. sit down, and he said he had to really run every day so he could stay thin enough to stay in the costume. Um, but anyway, let's go on to the next one, and this is uh, uh, actually retooling the entire uh, series from scratch. Um, it was Star Trek II, uh, The Vengeance of Khan, a.k.a. Wrath. Wrath. No, oh, that was the original title. It was changed to The Wrath of Khan. I'm sorry. Um, it was actually, um, they went to a television producer. Uh, I, I cannot think of It wasn't Gene name. Kuhn, I don't think. No, it was not Gene Kuhn. I can't think of his name, but he was. Uh, he produced the rest, next five entries. By the, the way, I don't want any more racist emails because I said Gene Kuhn, all right? It's Gene L. Kuhn, okay? <laughs> uh, I can't believe I remember that. Um, but this guy, actually, I forget his name. He actually um, uh, was a television producer, and they asked him, can you make a sequel to Star Trek for a very low budget? So they actually went to the television division and produced a script, and they got Nicholas Meyer, who was the a great, great writer. great Nicholas Meyer. Great writer, actually. And they... They uh, got him in, and uh, he wrote, rewrote the script uncredited and actually uh, made it Horatio Homeblower in space, as he said. Mm -hmm. And this one actually decided to make a direct sequel to the original series, uh, which was one of the most infamous episodes, which was Space, space Seed. No, Space Seed. Space Seed, yeah. yes, with Ricardo Montalbion, who uh, was the infamous con. Um, in a muscle suit. No, mm -hmm. actually, they said that was his real muscles. That's what they said. No, that, not, not a muscle suit. That was, that was definitely him. him. Was I, I thought, thought it was definitely. a muscle suit. The guy is in shape. He is, he is, <laughs> that was um, definitely But uh, they him. said they, they lacked a very strong villain in the first film, so they decided to get the best villain. They got Ricardo Montalbion to come back as Khan. That was very clever, though, if you think about it, to... Uh, although it worked for somebody like myself who never remembered him as the villain from Spacey. Like I said, I like Star Trek, but I didn't make the connection that this was this was uh, Khan from uh, from the Space Seed episode. 
Uh, and, and that was extremely clever because it was so well written that you didn't need to know anything mm -hmm. really about the yeah, space you, you scene. Even need to, that's what they did. They basically made it said he, they had a history. And I mean, if you saw the other episode, it added maybe a little bit more. But it, it was really. Nicholas Meyer's touch to make the, uh, the uniforms more nautical looking. And they look, they look a lot better actually than the original. Because yeah. the original one, it, they look like they look like they're in the day that the Earth stood still, like from 30 years earlier. It's just they're too dated. They look like they're, they're, they're outfits you wear at a day spa. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like they're like muscle shirts, you know, it's like kind of funny. Well, yeah. Yeah, they were gray and white, I think. But the very movie tight. does have a little bit but of redu redu reduced budget, um, but it's still, they make it work very well. And this time they have another score by uh, uh, Joe Hor was it? Uh, James Horner, who is a terrific, does a terrific job, actually a really good score, continuing off but changing Jerry Goldsmith's original. Um, what I think works most uh, in the film, of course, I think I love the rivalry between uh, Khan and, and uh, Kirk, even though they don't really, they never share the scene together, only through the viewfinder. There's really a real tense moments where they're in the darkness and the cl the nebula. Um, I, I don't know. It's a very creepy movie, too, actually, with the, the little yeah, the scorpion and the like thing. That creeped me yeah. out when I was younger. It's like the complete antithesis to the first film. Mm -hmm. It's pulpier. Oh, by the way, what'd you say about a restrained Shatner? Because we don't get a restrained Shatner this <laughs> one. We Khan! Khan! <laughs> We get full blown chatter in this one. Oh, yeah. First one, we get restrained. Say, oh, I thought you said a strange chatter. No, like, no, a re re restrained. 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 Khan! Restrained. No, 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 Khan. But I love the great timing. Dueling Khans, yeah. No, no, no. The Shatner is in full blown Shatner note. But it's his in best one, performance folks. is Kirk, actually, I think. Um, it was it was a little bit unsettling though because I got to see my hero because other than like Han Solo, Captain Kirk was like the stud to like pattern your life after because he was getting all the girls, you know, he was like the leader of the ship, so on and so forth. But here he was getting old and he was trying to come to grips with it, especially when they gave him the glasses. Well, that's why I thought it was interesting. Like, they're uh. actually letting the, ca the cast age instead of trying to, you know, and that's the only movie where they actually really address their ages because they're, they're in their 50s now. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. Shatner just turned 50, I believe, when he made this movie. Um, and I like that. Unfortunately, other films, they try to ignore their aging. Yeah. And, it and really then it works makes, against the cast. exactly, it doesn't yeah. work for the film. Um, and there's also <laughs> one very big faux pas in this movie. Actually, uh, it is Sulu, I'm sorry, not, not Sulu, excuse me. Uh, Chekhov actually is not the one, was not in the episode of Space Seed, but he's the one who Khan remembers when he sees him uh, when they you know, discover the probe, remember? Uh, and actually, Walter Koning tells a very famous story. He goes, they gave it to the cast to read, see if there's any problems with it, because, you know, continuity. Nobody said, he didn't say anything. And they got mad at him afterwards. He said, I'm not giving that up. That's a great part. Because they would have rewrote it for, of course, Sulu. But um, definitely, I think, one of the strongest entries in the entire series. In fact, it might be the best entry in the entire uh, original series. Well, it's canon. the one that sticks most in my mind out of all of them. It is a great I, one. I think it's also because Ricardo Montalban's a great actor, but that is, other than, unfortunately, Fantasy Island, that's the only other role he's really defined by. Isn't that sad? And, mm. Yes, and he and I think maybe the reason he get he, he might have given such a strong performance. No offense to all the people who like William Shatner. I don't. I certainly don't hate him. But m maybe one one of the thoughts that was going through his mind playing the character was like, this mother effer has a whole series and a movie after him, and here I am. And he took out that anger, you know, at, and used it for the character, and really just maybe just disliked William Shatner at all. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. they dislike each other? I don't know, but I would imagine that's what, at least if I was Ricardo Montalban, that's what I would have thought. All those years I had to play in Fantasy Island, and, you know, people always say, the plane, the plane, whereas, you know, Willem Shatner that gets to be. That is truly armchair psychology. I know, <laughs> well, hey, this is part of the well, show. Next I'm just week, armchair psychiatrist. So, ah, that is just my opinion. Maybe it's because I like Ricardo Montalban a whole lot more than I well, ever liked Ricardo Montalban is going to watch this, and he's going to call you and say, thank you so much. Now you I knew my it. motivation. Well, now, what's nice. interesting is Eric kind of talk about how much he hates midgets because of this movie. Go on. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get on that. Okay. Oh, before we midgets. have one thing, this actually, this movie starts the, uh, is the part one of a three-story arc, which will continue in the other stories of the Genesis device. Also, the ending with, which of course we're going to give you away anyway, is where, where Spock dies is a little over dramatic and kind of. I was actually thought that was very touching. So did I actually hate to admit, but as a child, I And cried. I was shocked did by it. I was shocked. Well, I was shocked by it. Um, I, I think it's not bad. It's just that I think it's a little overall. But I Eric, like what did you think of Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan? I thought I already indicated that I think it's probably the strongest entry in that whole original cast series. I, I think series. I might agree with you. It's the best acted. Probably, pr probably the best one, including the Next Generation films, because the Next Generation films aren't that great. I will disagree with you on that, but I will we'll give that later. And it, it in introduces two uh, names into the Star Trek lore. 
uh, Kobayashi Maru, mm-hmm. which becomes very famous. Cool ass name. And uh, Botany Bay. Oh God! Botany Bay. Don't do that. Every time I go to the outback, my friend sees the Botany Bay. He goes Botany Bay. Botany Bay. Bay. It sounds like you know uh, a female co-star in a 007 movie. By the way, that's the name. <laughs> of or Kobayashi the Maru too. Um, but, I like but anyway, the um, this the Genesis device, which we'll figure into this later. Anyway, we'll continue that. But anyway, uh, Star Trek Three: the, the Sp- Search for Spock, um, and this one was actually directed by Leonard Nimoy. He came back on a condition he could direct the film, and um, he came back. And actually, some people say this is the one that feels most like the television show. But I have some problems with. It. I think Christopher Lloyd is very good as the Klingon mm. commander. The problem is the production values on this movie are really bad with the Genesis planet. As everyone knows, the Genesis device uh, is a thing that actually can make a barren world into a nice living world with, you know, um, full of life. It's like, like a missile with exposed circuitry, but it's not that big. It, it just it makes a planet, a dead planet, a real life planet with trees and everything. And Spock's body is actually sent on there this planet. And reactivated. It's, it's sent there and his body is reactivated. And somehow McCoy, who has his, I guess his chi, I don't know what mm-hmm. they call it, uh, actually go to the planet to recover Spock's body to transfer his consciousness into Spock's body. The problem is the planet uh, is is actually deconstructing, and uh, the crew of the uh, Enterprise actually has to hijack their ship because it's again they're going against the Federation to mm-hmm. recover Spock's body, basically in a nutshell. Um, as I said, I think the production values on this one really it's hurt. Admiral Kirk becomes Captain Kirk. Yes, he, well, actually, that, he's demoted in the, in the, in the next entry. And we're introduced to Captain Kirk's illegitimate gay son. Well, actually, he was already in he the second He was in Rafa Khan. Oh, Rafa okay, Khan. yeah, that's right, that's right. But, uh, well, actually, he died of AIDS. I think this is probably the most forgettable one. I, I don't remember. The gods well, want to give me the well, Genesis device. I, I have to agree, but also disagree. It, it might be the most forgettable for most people. I'm confused. But at least for me, it is one of the most memorable. I'm because, confused. Well, I'm trying to explain. And so, Please, explain. what are you saying? What I'm saying is the reason I there's a few petty reasons I remember this film. It's First of all, was the movie poster. I don't know why, mm-hmm. but I was I thought it was one of the most beautiful posters I had seen at a young age, mind you. You know, I was probably about eight years. Jeff, old. I concur because I saw it in the theater and I got the program at the theater. So see on t- on Twenty Third Street. And <laughs> okay, is, Edwin concurs. That's I good. Concur. I concur. I concur. Well, well since he, since we he bring always, legitimacy. Since to he always throws it chops. to me, I think Jeff will agree. So, so anyway, yes. so thank so you. You agree and you disagree. Yes, and um, another reason uh, this movie was memorable for me was because I don't know the name of the actress, but the woman who played the female Vulcan, Robin had Curtis, a, who took over for Christy Alley from right. the other one. Yes, I had the hugest crush on her. I even got the uh, program guide just so I could look at pictures of her when this film yeah, came out. funny, we both had the program guide. See? Yeah, so, hey. um, that, was, that is probably why it was memorable. The only other reason it's memorable, which might be a spoiler, well, it is a spoiler, is Fuck also it. the fact that Captain Kurt's son got killed in the film. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, I don't know why, but that affected me considering Unlike Mike, I'm not really the biggest fan of Captain Kirk in the first place. More of his speech patterns, if anything else. So that is why the film... You're a fan of speech patterns? No, well, I am a fan of his speech patterns. But what, what about the film, Cadence. do you agree with me, that was sort of forgettable? Uh, I, could, uh, I can't really remember anything else other than the points I made well, up. Like, mm-hmm. he mentioned Christopher Lloyd. I don't even remember him being he in He was the, the lead bad guy. And also, uh, See? The, oh, there is one thing that was very memorable. The Enterprise is destroyed. Yeah, but it also, I think coming on the heels, again, of Ricardo Montalban, uh, you know, Christopher Lloyd just didn't make that impression. I so agree that with him I totally forgot he was in the he's film. He's good, he's and, good. But, it's just, but it's I mean, I like Christopher Lloyd as I an remember actor. the son dying. I remember Chrissy, uh, the replacement. Robin Curtis. What's her name? Being Shemp. replaced. Shemp. But for the life of me, and I remember all those shenanigans, the, the funny stuff about McCoy dealing with all the Spock stuff. I do not remember what the threat was. Uh, it, was like, it involved the Klingon. That's all the I remember. Klingon the Klingon wanted the Genesis the, device. For, 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 it won't give me the Genesis device. Well, apparently, God, Mike remembers. And I remember how pretty damn good. And I remember how disgusting the Klingon ship looked. <laughs> so that was the only other okay, thing. Uh, the problem with the movie too is the, 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 some of the scripting is terrible. It's like, what do you? The, the planet is deconstructed. What do you mean? I use excess proto matter. It's just like it's such lazy scripting when you see some of the dialogue. It's very clunky. But anyway, let's get on to the next one. The next one. <laughs> Actually, is the most successful entry in terms of box office, and actually, meant fan, who people who are not even trekkers like it. 
Um, it's Star Trek for the Voyage Home, which actually finds the, uh, inter it continues the Genesis device arc mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the uh, crew of the Enterprise uh, in exile on Klingon following their voyage and actually going back to Earth. And actually, in some ways, it's actually a remake of the first one, but actually better. Uh, again, an alien probe <laughs> has come to the Earth and is actually looking for a life form. Uh, this Which time, are? Our humpback <laughs> whales. <laughs> Actually, uh, this film actually... Great message. Great message. Great great controver message. Conservation. Um, and it's uh, with Leonard Nimoy, of course. <laughs> you hippie. <laughs> Save the way. Tree hugger. Well, we be whales here. Message. See, okay, I want to start off with this Go ahead, film. My because this is one of the films where I felt like... I liked the films, but I even as a child, I thought, okay, this is getting a little ridiculous. Because... They had this whole message, you know, other than, you know, the Star Trek, which was, you know, conservation and saving the whales. And I found that a little funny. And I also found it funny that the way they hide, you know, Spock's pointy ears is he just wears a really big white headband. And they ride on the city bus and he gives the Vulcan death lock to, you know, a stereotypical punk rocker listening to the boom But they're the, great, the best city in the world for that, San Francisco. Yeah, but I just started finding some of this stuff, like, more comical than... Well, but it was comical. Yeah, but it's not supposed to be comical. Yeah, it was supposed to be. We should like, clarify also. I I Edwin started off introducing us by a film that this is the film trackers have like the most problems with and all that stuff. It was pretty well received. It was no, the, one of the better reviewed Star no, Trek. Yeah. The, the ones that non trekkers like a and, lot. And, and the thing is, is that it is a very tongue in cheek film. Of all the films, it's probably exactly. the most, you know. It leans heavily well, on satire. It takes, well, it I guess I was it's looking for it to be serious. Well, it's, no, it's too. not trying to be it, serious. It's that's what I expected it's, when it's I was comical, going to see it. It's comical, and the though. thing is, it takes the very familiar fish very, out of water. There, there's some very good tweaks to the whole thing. I like thing. it. I think it's very I would funny. say the only thing I have a problem with where the humor goes a little too far, you know, it's like clearly these characters would not be so far removed from 20th century history not to know that's LSD. You know, you know, that famous scene where it's like he had too much LDS. LDS. And it's like, come on, that's that's like a stupid Well, show, I think it's kind know? of funny. I mean, there's some some scenes in there that are very, it take, like I said, it takes a very familiar fish out of water scenario where the characters from another time go into, you know, a, you know unfamiliar surroundings. Um, there's very good performances by the most of the cast, and everyone seems to be having a good time. And their, their fun time on screen really translates well. Um, Kirk gets the girl again. Kirk gets the girl. <laughs> In fact, that part was originally written for Eddie Murphy. I don't know if you know that. Eddie Murphy wanted Eddie to be Murphy a Star Trek. Eddie Murphy was going to be the girl? Eddie Murphy, they were going to make, yeah, they, they rewrote it to make it a, a woman. But Eddie Murphy was supposed to see some kind of like, uh, like you know, spaceship, I guess, at the, um, at a Super Bowl. And it was the Enterprise. Somehow he gets involved and he, they, he's the marine biologist or something. But they rewrote it when he decided to do something else. Like, I think the Golden Child. Would have been a little Much better choice. Movie. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, any, any uh, comments? Because we well, uh, there was there was two scenes in the uh, there's two scenes I really liked. One where McCoy we yells at the surgeon, time. "You butchers! You know, don't dig in his head or something." And then the other scene was is like, "Oh, how, we're do, you, how do you think he's not the one that invented this?" We will we will uh, transparent. We will talk aluminum. a little bit about this on next week. I'm pot dude. Until next week. Thank but you. Transparent I'm aluminum. I'm so happy. How do you know he didn't invent it? I love that one actually. They'll be whales here. Public access, the final frontier. These are the adventures of the cinephiles, whose five-year mission is to explore strange and unusual movies, to boldly watch and review what no one has watched before. while since we've been in the studio but we are here back we got new shows we got a lot of stuff to discuss um, but before that talks about Star Wars we discuss all all the on Star Wars show, films on this show uh, yes well not on this taping that that would be Star Trek 
Oh yes, excuse me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then we also uh, have a two-parter uh, where we're dealing with alcoholics uh, on one episode and junkies on the other. So there you go. Yeah, substance so abuse, man. If it's going to be a good show. And also, like I said, check out the YouTube site. Please subscribe if you haven't. And we promise you, we ha we've been a little lax with updates, but we have been working very hard behind the scenes to and bring And check out along. our Facebook fan page. Yeah, that's where we it's don't at. have that listed underneath the just thing here. Just look for here. us on Facebook; you'll see us. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll just just look us up on Face. Jo uh, face, look us up on Face. Look, look us up on Facebook <laughs> or FB. Join and join the discussions. We got discussions going, and we're all there individually. So add us as a friend if you like. And uh, we'll we miss our Manhattan fans. So we're come back. On. Yeah, we're back. Any Trekkie is the stuff that we call like losers. You know, like hey, you're a Trekkie. They don't like that term, so they call themselves Trekkers. Watch the documentary Trekkies uh, for more info on that, uh, which is actually a very good documentary. Um, but let's get into this today. Star, uh, Star Trek, the motion picture, uh, of course, is based on the original TV series, which uh, was a flop in its time, but became a huge hit in syndication and became the number one rated show uh, with young adults. Uh, at the time, when it was on NBC, it was actually, it was, it was highest, uh, the ratings were the highest, I believe, in the you know the lower age group, which was the most the in demand by advertisers. Well, the pr the but problem was the problem with Star Trek when it was on on the TV is it was going against the most highly rated show going at the time, which I forget what it was, but it was the number one rated show in the Nielsen rating, so it, it had a hard time going. You and know, also, the, and also the, the rating system was different back then. They had an overall rating system where it's how many people were watching total and not the actual age demographic. They were Anyway, let's get into this, guys. Uh, we were talking for a long time. We got a few requests on YouTube to do a show on, um, on Star Trek. So this is it. We're going to be doing the first. This is the first of a two-parter on the Star Trek series. Uh, we're discussing uh, today the first uh, the, the, the films in the, the the entire series, which would be the Motion Picture, Wrath of Khan, Search of Spock, Voyage Home, Final Frontier, and maybe if we have time, we'll do some more as well. Um, but let's. I wanted to see if you could actually name all oh, of them. Oh, I can. Okay, Final <laughs> Frontier, uh, the Undiscovered Country. Uh, let's see, Generations, uh, let's see, The First Contact, uh, the next one would be Insurrection, then the next one after that would be Nemesis, and then the next one, of course, would be Star Trek. There you go. Yay. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so let's start off with uh, Star, Tra Star Trek, the motion picture. I have some very interesting behind-the-scenes uh, info on this one. Good. Because I'm a, I, I hate to admit, I am not a Trekkie. I'm a somewhat Trekker. I do like the series, but I'm not a person who goes around wearing Vulcan ears. What's the difference between a Trekkie and a Trekker? I was going to ask. Well, I do. Let me introduce our wonderful co-host. To my left, Mr. Eric Cohen. To his left, Jeff Gallishaw. And to his left, Michael Fultz. All right, well, let's, let's, let's talk about, let's give everybody an update. We've taken a little sabbatical. As you can see, I've grown a mustache. So it's been a while since, <laughs> since we've been, uh, been taping, but... And I shaved my mustache. We, uh, we, uh, we've taped a lot of new shows, which we hope to have uploaded to YouTube. We actually did a lot of location shoots. We did one at Eric's apartment. Uh, we did one at a wonderful bar in uh, Bushwick called Gotham City Lounge, which you'll see soon. And we also did one down in Lower, the, Lower East Side called Nurse Betty's, another great bar. And uh, we decided the theme shows around the actual surroundings. So be on the lookout for those and uh, check out some more mini reviews, which we'll be posting on YouTube. As Gloria, which would be very kind enough to display those on the, on the lower third there, um, please check out the YouTube website and uh, subscribe if you haven't and whatnot. I want to get our fans a little bit more excited because we have uh, a two-parter coming up 